हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू फिजिक्स वाला एंड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेट टू आर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग चैप्टर ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री व्हिच इज नथिंग बट हाइड्रोकार्बन्स एंड बेसिकली इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी प्रेपरेशन मेथड्स ऑफ एल्केन्स बेसिकली इन दी प्रीवियस सेक्शन वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी प्रेपरेशन मैथड रिलेटेड टू एल्केन्स वी जस्ट स्टार्टेड दी प्रेपरेशन मैथड नाउ इन दिस सेशन I am going to complete the entire part related to the preparation as well as the properties of a different type of alkanes. So the main concept which we are going to discuss in this session, first one will be the preparation of alkanes. Then we are going to discuss about the properties, physical as well as chemical properties associated with alkanes. Then we are going to discuss the same part for alkanes as well. Now I am going to like take this session very short and crisp. to give you the entire idea about the preparation method of alkenes we discuss about the preparation method from alkenes as well as alkynes which is nothing but the reaction of hydrogenation now in the same way you can start with the alkyl halides and you can prepare alkenes with different type of reactions now if i talk about the next preparation method <coughs> i can simply say first of all we were talking about the preparation part we were talking about the preparation of alkenes and there are different methods for the preparation of alkanes in this section we were talking about the preparation from alkyl halide alkyl halide is nothing but rx group so by any chance if you can replace this rx group with rh then you can easily prepare your simple alkane there may be a chance that you can increase the chain length or there may, might be a chance that you can uh, put the carbon chain as it is in same number so if you are replacing this x with another alkyl group definitely the chain increment is going to take place if you are replacing this x with h only then a simple uh, carbon chain which is having same number of carbon atoms which are present in the original parent uh, halo alkane part that part will remain as it is okay so in this uh, particular scenario we are going to start with the preparation method first so in this section we are going to talk about the preparation by reduction of alkyl halide so you can use different type of reducing agents either you can use a zinc copper couple with roh or you can use na plus etoh or nahg couple with H h2o as well as you can prepare it with li alh4 all are basically reducing agent and they can provide h to the system so in this particular scenario whatever uh, alkene you are preparing there will not be any chain increment the carbon atom are going to remain as it is in the entire section so this is the first method a very interesting one i must say a very interesting one so you need to use different type of reducing agents and then reaction is simple you can use alkyl halide with hydrogen which is going to provide the hydride ion to the entire system and you can clearly prepare rh which is your simple alkene as well as hx i hope this entire part is clear in the same way if i talk about the uh, same uh, idea related to the entire part we have a specific reaction this reaction is very important this reaction is actually very important which is known as a decarboxylation of acid by any means if i can remove uh, co2 from the carboxylic acid then it will only remain with h part and which h is going to be connected with carbon but the thing here is you are reducing the carbon chain length definitely one carbon will be less in the alkyl uh, alkene part whatever is going to be prepared from the carboxylic acid so carboxylic acid is, uh, on decarboxylation which is removal of co2 basically in presence of a soda lime give a simple alkene and the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the stability of the carbon ion because the entire process occurs with the formation of carbon ion so you can simply say let's say we have rcooh and i'm using naoh and cao which is soda lime basically it's going to produce rh as well as a co2 so you can see you can see one carbon less in final product so that depend upon the process whatever you want to prepare if you want a one carbon less uh, product then definitely you can choose this entire process it's a very easy process i hope this part is clear 
सो नेक्स्ट टू मेथड्स आर बेसिकली फ्रॉम द एल्काइल हेलाइट एज वेल एज डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन ऑफ एसिड अलॉन्ग विद दैट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक रिएक्शन व्हिच इज नोन एज अ फ्रैंकलैंड्स रिएक्शन अगेन आई एम यूजिंग एल्काइल हेलाइट बट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सिनेरियो आई एम एक्चुअली रिएक्टिंग इट विद जिंक डस्ट इन अ क्लोज ट्यूब व्हेन अ हायर सिमेट्रिकल एल्केन्स विल बी फॉर्मड सो यू कैन से इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस व्हाट हैपेंस देयर इज अ इंक्रीमेंट इन number of carbon atoms you can clearly see there is increment in the number of carbon atoms and the reactants as well as reagents are already mentioned here reactant is basically your alkyl halide and reagent which you are going to use in this particular case is zinc dust so the entire part is going to be like just like the wood's type of reaction zn x2 is going to be formed and r and r both part are going to combine with each other so this reaction is just like your wood's reaction but instead of using sodium in a dry ether i am using zinc dust and definitely the reaction will proceed as it is i hope this entire part is clear in the same way if i talk about this reaction uh, basically in this reaction first franklin's reagent which is r z n r di alkyl zinc is actually going to be formed which uh, then reacts with alkyl halide to give higher alkanes okay so always remember in this particular part first of all both the uh, parts of uh, alkyl uh, halide part they are going to combine with zinc to form di alkyl zinc which again is going to react with uh, the next part which is rx group so definitely let's say we have let's say we have r z n r it means we have r negative in this particular part when it's going to react with the next rx it's going to attack here and this entire part is going to be liberated and eventually it's going to form r along with r and finally this part is going to connect it with x the next molecule is again going to react with each other and definitely you can say z n x2 is being formed in this particular reaction again a very easy type of reaction so always remember the preparation method of alkanes are the easiest one the easiest one but they will give you the entire idea about the next process uh, either the formation of alkyl halide either the formation of your um, alcohol i can say or amines or i can say all the derivatives so this is the first part i hope this entire portion is clear now in the same way if i talk about the examples you can say that let's say i'm starting with ch3br again it's going to react with the zn two molecules of this is ch3br so this br this br they are going to combine with each other so there is no need to put two here it's going to form zn br2 and eventually we have a ch3 zn ch3 either you can use this entire part if i'm talking about the mechanism i can clearly show that this zinc is going to liberate zinc 2 positive as well as four electrons this is ch3 br which is alkyl halide is going to attain these two electrons and eventually it will form uh, ch3 negative as well as br negative so you can say this mechanism is just like the wood reaction uh, woods reaction mechanism what happens then again this is ch3 negative is going to combine with the zinc to form uh, di alkyl zinc then eventually this di alkyl zinc is going to attack on the ch3 part and eventually it's going to form a simple alkene with more number of carbon atoms but again the process always occurs with the uh, uh, formation of a symmetrical type of alkenes okay i hope this entire part is clear i hope this entire part is clear now if i talk about the next part next we are talking about the kolb's electrolysis this reaction is actually the most important one reaction because this reaction is going to be utilized in the formation of a first part which is supposed to be your alkene it may be useful in in the uh, preparation of alkenes also so definitely this uh, process is uh, widely used in the preparation of alkenes as well as alkenes what happens electrolysis of concentrated aqueous solution of either sodium or potassium salt of a saturated monocarboxylic acid so you have a cooh group carboxylic acid you can replace this h with na positive or k positive that is your potassium or sodium salt of carboxylic acid which yields the uh, higher alkanes at anode so definitely the electrolysis process is going to take place what happens first of all if i talk about the electrolysis this uh, chain is going to form again more number of carbon atoms but this is coo part is not going to uh, takes place in this particular process because the co2 is being liberated in the entire reaction actually what happens that uh, let's say we have a potassium salt of carboxylic acid it's going to react with the uh, water definitely in the aqueous solution the electrolysis is going to take place so in the electrolysis we have two parts first one is cathode next one is anode on the cathode you can see 
the reduction is going to take place in in the process of anode definitely oxidation is going to take place what happens ethane will be formed co2 will be liberated and koh will be formed along with the uh, formation of h2 also okay so this is a very simple reaction related to the formation of alkanes again in this particular case number of carbon atoms are going to increase in the entire process now if i talk about the mechanism mechanism is a very easy to understand so the formation of alkane follows a free radical pathway in this particular scenario what happens that this ch3coona is going to be converted into ch3co negative as well as any positive just like a simple electrolysis process we have a certain ions positive as well as negative ion now this a positive ion is going to be reduced on the cathode so on cathode you know that a reduction is going to take place in this case reduction will takes place while on this section you can say oxidation will takes place okay now if i talk about the anode only if, uh, sorry if i talk about the cathode only this na positive is going to attain the electrons and eventually it's going to be converted into na this na is going to react with h2o to form naoh as well as uh, h2 okay so this is supposed to be solid this is supposed to be solid okay uh, this reaction is a very very easy reaction. So cathode part is you are forming NaOH as well as you are liberating H2 gas because Na when actually combines with H2 it's going to liberate NaOH the solution becomes basic and H2 gas is going to liberate. In the same way if I talk about the anode first of all this is CH3COO negative is going to be converted into free radical by the liberation of these two electrons. Now these two electrons are actually consumed by Na positive. So the entire process is correlated with each other. This is a free radical. Either what happens in this entire scenario, this is CO2 part is going to be liberated and CH3 free radical is going to form in this particular scenario. And CH3 free radical again combines with another CH3 free radical to form a corresponding alkane. So this, this step is actually very important in case of anode. There might be a chance that multiple side reactions are going to occur. First of all, if you are preparing this CH3COO free radical, it's going to combine with this CH3 radical and you can also form ester. There might be a chance that you can also form alkene in this entire scenario. So this reaction is widely used for preparation of a different type of uh, compounds depending upon the properties, whatever you want. Okay. Now, if a mixture of two salts, let's say R1COOK and R2COOK are taken in the hydrocarbons, then definitely multiple products are going to be formed. First one is the symmetrical one, R1, R1 and R2, R2 are also obtained. Esters are also obtained. Lower alkenes are also obtained and alkenes are also obtained as a side product. That's why this reaction is actually very useful. This reaction is very, very useful. I hope this entire part is clear. A very easy reaction, a very easy reaction. If you look at this entire part that let's say we have a C2H5COONA, it's going to form CH, uh, C2H5COO negative as well as Na positive. This entire part is going to be converted into free radical or you can say this entire part whatever free radical is being formed, whatever free radical is being formed, it's going to be converted into C2H5 free radical and CO2 will be liberated. Again, you can say that this entire part either is going to combine directly with this free radical which is formed and ester will be formed. This might be a chance or you can see these two free radicals are being generated. One part will undergo the process of oxidation. Next part will go under the process of reduction. So lower alkane and alkene are also formed in this reaction. That's why this entire part is very, very important. I hope this entire scenario is clear. So always remember this reaction is actually very important. Okay, now let's talk about the next process, which is Kore House synthesis. So in the last class, we were talking about the Kore House synthesis. Again, a very important name reaction, a very important name reaction. What happens in this case when alkyl halide is the first converted into lithium alkyl? So first of all, you are going to react it with the lithium part uh, by which it can be easily converted into lithium alkyl, which again reacts with the CuI2, which is nothing but, uh, sorry, Cu2I2, which is Q plus. Uh, iodide to form lithium dialkyl cuprate R2CuLi is being formed. It is then treated with alkyl halide to give an alkane. Now this mechanism is again just like the Woods type of mechanism. R negative is being developed. It's going to attack on the alkyl halide part and eventually uh, alkane is being formed with more number of carbon atoms. Okay. So if I talk about the entire process, first of all, <coughs> we have 
CH3Br, which is alkyl halide, it's going to react with the lithium in a dry ether uh, medium because it's highly reactive. Uh, if water is being uh, there, like if moisture is present or if water is there in the medium, definitely whatever is being formed is directly going to react with the water and eventually you can form a simple alkane. So that's why we can remove the water. So it's going to first of all form this is CH3 Li alkyl lithium. This alkyl lithium is going to react with the Cu2I2 and it's going to form uh, LiCH3 twice Cu which is uh, lithium dimethyl cuprate and eventually this entire part will be having CH3 negative. It's going to attack on this entire part and Br will be liberated. So you can say we have a C2H5 CH3 Cu, uh, CH3 Cu as well as LiBr. Again in this case whatever alkene is formed is having more number of carbon atom more number of carbon atoms are there. I hope this entire part is clear. I hope this entire part is clear. Very easy reaction, but very important one. In this, uh, in this particular uh, scenario, we can say for a good yield of alkane, what happens? The alkyl halide must be either CH3X or a primary alkyl halide or a secondary cycloalkyl halide. What happens? The entire part actually depends upon the type of mechanism. It's better to use uh, CH3X uh, part or it's better to use uh, your uh, two degree or primary type of alkyl halide because it's easy to attack on that particular part. If it is already hysterically hindered, it's not feasible to attack on the en entire part. There might be a chance that instead of forming alkene, alkene will be formed. Okay. So the alkyl group of the lithium dialkyl cuprate, also called as Gilman's reagent, may be methyl 1 degree, 2 degree or 3 degree. Moreover, the two alkyl groups being coupled need not to be different. So they might be same, they might be different, but you need to make sure whatever moieties you are using, they are aesthetically free so that it can easily attack on the next side. Okay. I hope this entire part is clear. Just remember this thing. Just remember this important thing. Okay. Now, if I talk about the next part, you can simply say that uh, we have a reaction which is a CH3 twice CHBr, which is 2 degree. This entire part is a 2 degree alkyl halide. It's going to react with first of all lithium, then uh, CuI2, then eventually it's going to form the main reagent, which is alkyl or you can say lithium alkyl cuprate. It's going to form the entire part, which eventually is going to react with 1 degree because it is hysterically free. So it can easily attack on this position and eventually you can see after attacking on this position, the formula will be CH3, CH2 and next part is this, this entire part is coming which is CH, CH3 twice. So the mechanism is actually very easy to understand and you can actually predict the product very efficiently. Okay. Now, in the same way, if I talk about the next part, next part is related to the property. So we have already discussed the uh, entire part related to the preparation. Now it's time to discuss about the properties of alkanes. You can see the physical properties of alkanes are very easy to understand. Uh, there is nothing new about the alkanes. Uh, we already know certain part from the basics of organic chemistry that uh, if I talk about the alkanes, uh, let's say if I talk about the, their boiling point, definitely that boiling point depends upon the Van der Waal force of attraction. So as the size is going to increase, definitely they become more and more heavy. And due to that, the Van der Waal force of attraction is going to increase and eventually their boiling point uh, is going to increase. If I talk about the uh, structure where we are talking about the same number of carbon atoms, but branching is going to increase. Always remember due to increment in the branching, what happens their size or their entire volume becomes less and less. They become very compact. So if they are very compact, definitely their surface area becomes very less. And uh, due to that, the extent of a Van der Waal force of attraction is going to reduce and their boiling point is going to decrease. So this is the basic part related to the entire portion. In case of hydrocarbons, you know that there is no other group. So if there is no other group, definitely they are mostly non-polar in nature. So they are soluble in the non-polar solvent also. Okay. Now coming back to the properties, first property is quite interesting, which is nothing but the halogenation reaction. Halogenation means you are reacting a particular alkane with X2. X2 means your halogen and you are replacing 1H with 1X. So definitely multiple products are going to be formed. What happens that alkanes react with bromine or chlorine in presence of sunlight or UV light or in dark at high temperature, which is generally uh, 250 degrees Celsius to 400 degrees Celsius, forming a mixture of uh, substituted products. So 
if you want to stop the reaction at a particular product you have to use certain more reagents but if you want the reaction to complete then definitely each and every part is going to be replaced so ch4 first of all is going to react with the cl2 in presence of sunlight it's going to form ch3cl one substitution then second substitution then third substitution and then fourth substitution i hope this part is clear i hope this part is clear so this reaction is actually unstoppable if you want to form a particular product up to this point only, then you have to use certain more reagents to stop the reaction at this point only. <coughs> now, if I talk about the yield, the yield of monohalogenated product can be increased, which is the first product, by using a substrate which is alkane in excess. So, if we, I'm using alkanes in excess, then only I can form mono substituted product. Otherwise, if the uh, entire part of alkane is less and halogens are more, uh, the entire product is going to be multiple products and eventually the last substitution is going to take place. Okay, if I talk about the reactivity order, definitely F2 is highly, highly reactive and the reactions with I2 are very, very slow and they take place like at high temperature and eventually they are very slow. So, if I talk about the F2, the reaction actually takes place in dark itself and at very low temperature. In case of Cl2 and Br2, you generally need a slight high temperature or you can use sunlight or UV light. But in case of I2, you need a high temperature for the reaction part. I hope this entire portion is clear. This is the entire part related to the halogenation reaction. Now, if I talk about the mechanism, mechanism is quite interesting. In this case, we are talking about the free radical uh, substitution type reaction. What happens? First step in that case will be chain initiation step. First of all, chain is going to initiate. It means a particular free radical is being generated. So this X2 in presence of UV light or at high temperature is going to generate this free radical, X free radical. Then the second step will be chain propagation. Chain propagation means the entire reaction is going to proceed. So what happens, this free radical is going to combine with alkyl, uh, simple alkane. And eventually what happens, this is going to form HX and alkyl free radical is being generated in the second step. This alkyl uh, free radical, whatever is being formed, is going to react with again X2 to form Rx and again X uh, free radical is being formed. So X free radical again is going to uh, go on this side, again the reaction proceed and again product will be formed. So you can see this step is going to uh, proceed multiple times, multiple times to form more and more amount of product. Now it depends if uh, you want to stop the reaction, then the last step will be the uh, chain termination step. The last step will be the chain termination step. So whatever free radicals are being generated, let's say X free radical is there. So it's going to combine with another X free radical to form X2 first part. It may be possible that it's going to combine with R uh, free radical, which is being formed in the reaction. Again, Rx will be formed. It may be possible that R free radical is there and another R free radical is there. So multiple products are going to be formed in this entire part and RR will be there. So radical inhibitors stop a chain propagation by reacting with the free radical intermediates. So I can use certain inhibitors to stop the reaction. Let's say I'm using this R free radical which is being formed and I'm using peroxy free radical. Generally peroxy free radicals are very much available and they can stop the reaction. So they can finally stop the entire reaction. I hope this entire part is clear. It's a very interesting reaction. Now you can see the entire part depends upon the formation. It depends upon the formation of a free radical. It depends upon the formation of a free radical. It means free radical is being formed in the reaction. So to understand the entire part, you need to understand the stability of free radical, which we have already discussed uh, in the section, which is electronic effects. In the electronic effects, we discussed about the stability of free radical. Generally, three, red, uh, three degree free radicals are more stable than two degree and then one degree free radical and last part will be methyl free radical. So you need to understand that the entire part uh, occurs with the formation of free radical. So you need to understand what will be the stability of free radical. That part is already being discussed in the electronic effects. I hope this entire portion is clear. It's a very interesting reaction. First reaction, which is nothing but the halogenation reaction. Just have a look at it. Okay, <clears throat> now if I talk about the next process, which is nothing but nitration. So nitration of alkanes may be carried out in the vapor phase 
between the temperature range of 150 and 475 degrees Celsius, whereupon a complex mixture of mononitroalkanes is obtained. Complex mixture means there might be a chance a different type of side products are going to be formed. So I'm starting with a simple alkane. Then the reagent is nothing but HNO3, which is used for the process of nitration at the temperature which is 400 degrees Celsius. What happens? You can see this product is being formed. Again, the NO2 is being formed at the second uh, carbon. And in this particular case, there might be a chance that uh, this CH3, CH2 part is going to combine with NO2 and this CH3 part is going to combine with NO2. So that's why we have a complex type of reaction because it, there might be a chance that it's going to break down the carbon-carbon bond and we have different type of multiple products which are being produced in this entire reaction, okay? I hope this part is clear. I hope this entire part is clear. Now, if I talk about the next process, again, it's a very easy process, which is isomerization reaction. Isomerization reaction is basically, you are converting a linear change into more branching with the same number of carbon atoms. That is isomerization. What happens? Lower alkanes are not isomerized because there are very less chance than they can form their isomers. But butane or higher number of alkanes, if heated with aluminum chloride at a high temperature, again, a very important reaction. Again, a very important reaction, okay? If they are going to be heated with aluminum chloride at high temperature, then they convert into stable isomers by rearrangement reaction. So, uh, why we are saying that we are starting with the butane and higher part? Because they can easily form. You know that in case of butane, we have N-butane, we have isobutane. In case of pentane, we have uh, N-pentane, we have isopentane, we have a neopentane. It means they are the isomers. The difference is of their branching only. So that part is only applicable after butane or you can select butane also, okay? So this entire reaction is very interesting. Always remember the reagent being used in this type of reaction. So if I talk about the entire analysis, I can say that uh, in this particular process, you have uh, ALX3 with HX. Uh, X can be Cl, Br or I. Or you can also start with Al2SO4 thrice as well as H2SO4 at 200 degrees Celsius. What happens? <clears throat> definitely a rearrangement is going to take place. So we have N-butane, this H is going to on, go on this side, this CH3 will come on this side and eventually a rearrangement is, uh, is being formed and you can convert N-butane into isobutane, a very important type of reaction. Okay, now if I talk about the next part, I can say if we take N-heptane, then it converts into most stable form, which is a triptane, which is a trivial name, definitely. So you can say we have this CH3, CH2, 5, and then CH3, which is N-heptane. It's going to be converted into 2, 2, 3, trimethyl butane, which is known as a triptane, which is the most stable form. So after isomerization, this entire part is going to be converted. Always remember this reaction as it is, because uh, there might be a chance in the examination, it may be asked directly, okay? Now, in the same way, if I talk about the next part, which is a reaction with SO2 and Cl2, which is chlorosulfonation. What happens in case of chlorosulfonation, that the reaction is also known as a Reed's reaction. And when the propane reacts with SO2 and Cl2 in presence of UV light, the propyl sulfonyl chlorides are being formed, which are a very important reagents in case of chemistry. We are going to learn about that part in case of uh, haloalkane as well as haloarenes. Okay. So this is CH3, CH2, CH3, which is propane is going to react with SO2 and Cl2 and eventually it's going to form, uh, I guess this structure is not correctly written, but I'm going to write it here. We have CH3, then we have a CH2, then we have uh, CH2, then we have SO2 and Cl. This is going to be formed in the entire reaction and remaining part will be HCl only. Now, this process is used in the commercial formation of a detergent. It's a very important process, definitely a very interesting one also, okay? And this reaction is actually known as a Reed's reaction. I hope up to that part, everything is clear to everyone. So, this is the entire part related to the chlorosulfonation reaction, okay? Now, the next part is very common reaction, which is known as combustion reaction. So, combustion you already know in case of alkanes. So, combustion is a rapid oxidation that takes place at high temperatures and converting alkanes to carbon dioxide and water. Eventually, whatever alkanes you have after burning, they are going to produce CO2 as well as H2O. If you are talking about the proper oxidation, complete oxidation and complete combustion. 
okay little control over the reaction is possible definitely except for moderating the temperature the controlling the fuel air ratio to achieve the efficient burning so you can decide whatever conditions you want you can play with that particular part to form desired products but eventually the final product of every alkane their final product of the oxidation is always co2 i hope this entire part is clear now if i talk about this entire part i can say that i have a cn h2n plus 2 which is alkane which is nothing but alkane so when this alkane is going to be oxidized with excess of O2, a large amount of heat is being produced and eventually you can say that CO2 is being formed as well as H2O will be produced. So let's say I have CH3, CH2, CH3, definitely CO2, H2O. If I'm talking about CX, HY, whatever it is, then definitely CO2 as well as H2O is being formed. These are the examples related to the combustion type of reaction. Very easy, very simple type of reaction. Okay. Now, if I talk about the incomplete combustion, that is also possible. So, let's say now oxygen is present in the limited amount. Definitely, it will not achieve the final oxidation. There are multiple products which are being formed. And again, they have a very uh, important scenario. When alkane is being burned in insufficient supply of oxygen, they are going to form carbon monoxide <coughs> and sometimes carbon black may be formed. What happens when we have a CH4 and now we have limited amount of O2? It's going to form a CO along with h2o okay there might be a chance that in the limited supply it's also go going to form a c plus h2o which is carbon black again they have a practical application co as well as carbon black so we can utilize that part also okay so if i talk about the reaction with steam again i can say methane actually reacts with steam over nickel suspended on alumina at a very high temperature which is 1073 kelvin and hydrogen gas is being formed in this reaction and this entire mixture is very important this entire mixture we are going to use this entire mixture uh, you already know this mixture which is known as a syn gas or you know synthesis gas that part is very very important and uh, it has a many many applications in case of a chemistry you can form different type of compounds with the help of this mixture which is known as synthesis gas a mixture of co as well as h2 so eventually if you react this entire part with the steam this entire part is already present in hydrogen chapter so you may know this reaction which is a very easy reaction ch4 plus h2o which is a steam uh, in presence of nickel alumina and uh, at high temperature it's going to form co plus h2 I hope this entire part is clear. Now, if I talk about the catalytic oxidation in presence of catalyst, I can also produce different type of products. Not all the products are going to be CO2 because we are not talking about the combustion. I'm only talking about the uh, oxidation part. So there might be a chance that if I'm using CH4 with O2 into 9 is to 1 ratio in presence of a copper tube at a high pressure, very high pressure, which is 100 atm, it's going to form methanol. So it's a basically manufacturing process of a methanol. In the same way, if we have a methane as well as O2 in the presence of molybdenum oxide and 543 Kelvin and 100 atm pressure, it's going to form formaldehyde. Again, a commercial method to pro uh, produce formaldehyde. So these reactions are actually very important and they have a, a um, I can say, a practical applications associated with each and every part. Okay, I hope this entire portion is clear. Now, if I talk about the same type of reaction, in presence of Ag2O and heat, this alkyl part is going to be converted into COOH. So you can produce carboxylic acid also in this type of reaction. Now the controlled partial oxidation of methane at 1773 uh, uh, Kelvin yields acetylene. So there might be a chance that you can form acetylene also which is known as ethane. Okay, so these type of reactions are possible. Oxidation reactions are always, always useful for the practical applications. Just have a look at it. Okay, now <clears throat> if I talk about the chemical oxidation, in this case, we just have to change the uh, reagent which, which, uh, whichever we are using. So instead of using all those previous reagents, not a catalyst, we are generally going to use KMnO4 or K2CrO7. So alkanes are usually not affected by oxidizing agents like KMnO4 or K2CrO7. But alkanes having a tertiary hydrogen are oxidized by these oxidizing agents to the corresponding alcohols. So you can see 
that if you know all the reactions of alkenes, it's very easy to understand all the reactions or preparation methods of alcohols, hello alkenes or a different type of carboxylic acids. Okay, so eventually it's going to be uh, like, like we have a tertiary hydrogen. This is the tertiary hydrogen because it is connected with tertiary carbon in presence of alcoholic, uh, uh, sorry, alkaline KMnO4, it's going to form tertiary butyl alcohol so eventually alcohol is being formed in this particular reaction again a very important reaction now direct fluorination if i talk about the reaction just like the first part where we were talking about the halogenation where you were using cl2 br2 and i2 but direct fluorination was not possible because the reaction was a very very fast there might be chance that reaction becomes explosive in nature and uh, it can be achieved with the help of some other type of methods. So let's say I have the alkyl bromide and I'm reacting with uh, HGF2. Now this reaction is not that explosive and it's a uh, fairly fast. I'm not saying it's a very fast reaction, but it's a fairly fast reaction and eventually it's going to form the fluorinated product. So eventually you can form the fluorination by this method. Now bromination is slower than chlorination and is carried out at high temperature. So in this type of reactions, bromination, chlorination, their rate are going to decrease, but fluorination is very feasible in this type of reaction. So always remember this entire reaction is going to be very important one if you want to prepare the fluorinated product. Okay. Uh, if I talk about the iodination, definitely the rate is going to decrease from F2 to Cl2 to Br2 to I2. So iodination is going to be a reversible reaction and can be carried out sufficiently in presence of a strong oxidizing agents only like HiO3, like nitric acid and uh, whatever they have basically they are going to destroy hydroidic acid and shift the equilibrium towards the right hand side so in this reaction you can say let's say we have ch2 and i2 it's going to form ch3 i uh, ch3 i as well as hi now this hi being formed it can be easily combined with hio3 to form i2 as well as h2o so that this entire part can be consumed and reaction will go in the forward direction only i hope this entire part is clear so all the reactions of uh, alkenes are very very easy if I talk about the Finkelstein reaction, in this particular scenario, we have RCl and I'm reacting it with NaI. So it's a type of uh, halogenation reaction with a specific type of reagents. So in this particular scenario, you can form Ri with the formation of NaCl. Again, a very important type of reaction. Very important type of reaction. Okay. Now, now. If I talk about the entire part, we have discussed uh, all the properties, uh, chemical properties, as well as the preparation methods related to simple alkenes. In the next class, we will try to uh, discuss about the alkenes as well as alkynes part. First of all, we are going to discuss about the preparation methods of alkenes. They are very easy, trust me. And uh, uh, after that, we are going to cover uh, their properties which are chemical properties and those chemical properties are actually very very important in case of alkenes as well as alkynes okay so i hope the entire part related to this session is clear to everyone and uh, next part will be discussed in the uh, upcoming session okay so that's all from my side thank you so much एक काम कर दीजिए जब स्पिन अप फिर देख लीजिए पहले